Hello, it's Nugsy back with part two of this on-step build. In this one, it's all about motorizing the mount. And it's going to be a lot shorter than that first video. If you missed the first video, you should know that motorizing your mount in itself is not going to help at all without the on-step controller built in part one. So let's get right into it. This is my motorised EQ5. It's not a Skywatcher, that's just a brand name, but it's still made by the same people, Sinter, who sell their products under names such as Skywatcher. As I've already said, motorising this mount is the easy part. In fact, you don't need much more than this picture to do so, as this mount already has mounting positions, especially four motors, on there. One up top on the deck axis, and one down below via a hole underneath for the RA. So we can fit the motors with brackets onto these points, and then just by taking off the control knobs for the RA and deck axis, we can mount the pulleys and belts onto those axes. At the top on the deck axis, the pulleys are 48 teeth and 12 teeth. And then at the bottom on the RA, we've got 48 teeth and 16 teeth. So the 4812 gives a 1 in 4 gear reduction, and the 4816 gives a 1 in 3. It's important to have a good bit of tension on these pulleys, because they can easily slip off, especially with the heavy load that I'm putting on mine. But if it's overly tight, you'll be working against your motor. Now... Before I go into anything intricate in the way of mounting and wiring, there's a couple of things I've done recently to this. One being the curly lead up to the deck motor. This allows for full movement, it doesn't snag on anything, it doesn't pull it tight at any point. And all I've done there is hot glued this curly lead into the top bracket and soldered the wires to the motor wires. This is far better than how I did have it. Originally I had this so that the RJ45 cable came up to a port on the deck motor, but there was just too much movement in the cables. At the bottom end of this curly lead I've done exactly the same thing going into this cover. Now this cover is often just removed when a motor is put on, because it doesn't fit back on. As you can see here, what I've done is I've actually cut out the shape for the pulley wheels. And this does enable the original cover to go back on then. Although it's not really original anymore. But this mount's not going to return to its original state anyway. I shall show you this now, how I've done this inside. I've put both RA and deck axis ports, the RJ45 ports, in the side of the cover here. And that just doesn't move. All the rest of the mount moves, but that stays put, so there's no pulling on those cables. You can basically see in here that there's copious amounts of hot glue holding everything in place. So let's show you some wiring for these RJ45 ports. Right, while well, my hot glue gun warms up, I'll just show you this. This is a new RJ45. And you can see there are eight pins. Oop. I'm not steering this phone very well. So eight pins in the top, and we only need four wires connected, so each of these are to be paired up front to back. And I'll show you what I did in order to do that, in what I've showed you behind this. You can see on the pins on the right, I've bent the two together, and then the second pair I've bent together going the opposite way I've not yet done the others but that is just to show you what I do then is solder a wire to the first pair and then solder a wire to the second pair sleeved and 
that's what becomes that. All right then. So when it comes to fitting the motors, um, a lot of people do show it and it looks like a speedy process and it kind of is, but I actually had trouble with lining these brackets up. I bought these from Amazon for about 10 of the 10, 15 pounds pack of four, supposedly with fitting screws, but it didn't come with many. Um, and they seem to be a standard size, standard fitment, which is why I didn't make my own. However, I did have to cut it down because this curved edge here sat up above this edge. So I had to cut a bit off the back and I did a little bit too much. So I've got a slight taper on her as well, which means the whole thing can skew. So before tightening down, I literally just put a little washer in this gap. Just keep it there and then tighten the hell out of that so this bracket no longer moves i will need to um recut one a lot nicer i do have a spare but i want to fit my focuser before assigning it as a spare um and that's that really this goes on it's literally there are just two little holes in the sides and you get your little allen key and bolt it down uh, it goes onto it like a D shaft how far in or out um, will kind of depend on the motor this has already been fitted I'm doing a refit for this video I have to make sure everything lines up so in order to get this on now um, we need a belt first off And I'll get round both. Okay, so I just got that little bit of tension in there without being slack or tight. Much like a motorcycle chain, bicycle chain, whatever. Um so now I just got these four little screws. Okay, so I have the sorry for the shakes. I have this pulley wheel on the motor shaft as well. Um, this is a smaller five mil wheel, and this is brought out slightly to meet this, whereas that is only just off the end, uh, just off the the frame of the mount there. So we don't want it pulling like that or like that i want to make sure they're lined up so this this has had to come up the shaft a little but that's fine because i'm not going to turn the motor now the locking nuts for it around the back here uh the, it's the same system anyway you've got the locking nuts and you can just put that as long as the locking nuts actually lock onto the shaft and no tapered end or anything so that's basically that and once all those four screws are in that is mounted obviously on your first mount you're going to need to sort out exactly where that bracket needs to be to have the right tension on this belt remember not too tight a little bit of play but not enough to uh, miss as it, you don't want it pulling off the teeth as it goes around. Okay, as before, this deck motor has already been fitted, and I'm just doing it again for the video bit. Um, so the bracket is on in place. There is one mounting point already on the Skywatcher EQ5, as is for the RA axis, and I wanted to put a captive bolt on there, but I actually just kind of made this hole bigger and 
to make the nut a kind of wedge shape with an angle grinder. So when I screw down on this, the wedge shape drives into the bracket and holds it solid. Um, yes, this can be undone and slid up and down the axis for the because this is an elongated hole here uh, for the belt adjust adjustment. Um, so yes, I fitted the RJ45 port and brought it through to, I just used some male headers from the PCB project and on the motor then, some females. So here goes. Um, I've got my screws handy. Okay, so plug in, and we just need to make sure that's all nice and hidden. The more hidden, the more better. I didn't put the 48s of wheel onto the other axis yet. So I'm going to need to do that first because the belt has to go on before I tighten this motor down. This may or may not go off camera a minute. Okay, just eyeing to the right level there. Looks good, looks enough. Come on, get in there. Don't want to let that motor drop because it'll yank all the cables if it does. Okay. So now. There. Now I can tighten down on him. And that is that. I don't have an actual cover for this one. But I don't like that big yellow sticker. The ACT motor thing. No advertising intended. I haven't even tested them. They're just... They're German, they were cheap enough. I think, well, I said German and not the Chinese, as they all are from a German company. But I think the German company has them made in China to their spec because they offered to change the spec when I asked a question about them. This motor isn't housed, that's just a piece of plastic cut to the shape of the back of the motor up to the end of the bracket and stuck over it with double-sided tape. There was a hole in the end of the motor, so I put a hole in this plastic just in case it needs to breathe or whatever. I don't know if it's necessary.